A very good evening to one and all. Welcome to your C Sportscast for this evening. For the fifth year running, 12 deserving cricket teams were the recipients of funding from Shell Trinidad Limited. Shell's Louis Prada expressed his company's continued support of the development of the sport in various communities here in Trinidad. We are pleased to build on our proud legacy of development of some of Trinidad and Tobago and the West Indies great cricketers through this community grant program. It is my hope that through this program, participants will learn the benefits of collaboration and partnership, not only with their team members, with their teammates, but also with the communities where they are based. Association. Into three categories with eight teams receiving $15,000 each, two teams received $20,000 and two others received $25,000 to assist in the various aspects of management and logistics. Like to express my sincere thanks and appreciation to Shell Company Limited for their generosity and kindness. While many organizations are reducing costs and trimming expenses, it is indeed refreshing to note that Shell has seen the value and importance of investing in the national community. I would like to assure them that we, the recipient clubs, will vindicate that fate by using the grant to not only funding our operating expenses, but to transform and develop lives in our communities. That was David Hector expressing gratitude to Shell on behalf of all of the recipients today. Well, we stay with cricket as the West Indies cricket team starts its mini camp over in Barbados, minus the IPL players. All eyes were new captain Dennis Ramden and the injured all-rounder Dwayne Bravo, who is hoping to be fit enough to play in the first test at Sabina Park early next month. But a couple of the key players were still involved in the IPL and missed the camp, including Lendell Simmons and Kyron Pollard, who were involved in a key match with their Mumbai Indians, helping them to a big win over the Delhi Daredevils, which keeps their slim hopes of making the playoffs alive. <laughs> Once again, the Mumbai Indians got a wonderful start from the pair of Lendl Simmons and Mike Hussey. The Australian, though, was the lead this time as Simmons watched from the other end as the dazzling left-hander got stuck into the Delhi attack. It was his turn to show his mettle and he didn't disappoint as he top scored with a blistering 56 from 33 deliveries with seven fours and two sixes. Simmons, though, took his time a bit more th this time around and coming off his maiden IPL turn was hoping for another big one. He eventually reached 35 with five fours before being dismissed, but he did his part in adding an invaluable 87 for the first wicket. In the end, Mumbai posted a challenging 173 all out in 19.3 overs. In reply, Delhi also made a bold start as Peterson threatened to hit his way out of a batting slump that has seen him fail to deliver that really big score so far this year. He produced a blistering 44 with six fours and a six to lead from the front. But they lost wickets at critical junctures and lost the plot in the end. Other useful contributions came from Tiwari who made 41 and an unbeaten 45 from Dumini pushed them along nicely until they lost their way and could only muster 168 for four to hand Mumbai victory by 15 runs. The win keeps Mumbai in the hunt for a playoff spot as they climb to 12 points from 13 matches and are in a fifth position looking up at the Rajasthan Royals who are in fourth two points ahead of them. Rajasthan were chasing Kings 11 Punjabs 179 for four and needed a good start to have any chance of overhauling that total. They didn't exactly achieve what they wanted as they lost near early at 21 for one. They got useful contributions though from the likes of Rahani who made 23 and Watson who reached 30 to give the innings life. But they lost too many wickets at critical junctures and then were in a race against time trying to keep up with the asking rate. That's despite some big hitting from the likes of Hodge and Faulkner, who added 31 and 35 not all respectively, but it wasn't nearly enough as they reached 163 for 8 to hand Kings 11 point of victory by 16 runs and top spot on that table. It means now that 4th place Rajasthan must beat 5th place Mumbai Indians in Sunday's head-to-head -head clash in order to stand any chance of making the 14 playoffs. Tonight is the night for Petro Jazz as they head east to the Maloney Indoor Complex to face Valencia Heat in Game 2 of their Mackinson Super 10 Big 4 Championship Series. The Easterners stunned Jazz in their backyards on Tuesday, and now they're trying to do the same thing in Game 2. 
Meanwhile, police beat Cortez 7761 last evening at the Jean Pierre Complex to level the Super 10 Basketball Women's Championship Series at one apiece. Police were led by center Alicia Liverpool and guard Jolisa Cooper, who combined for 42 points in the 16 point win. For quarters, the American Donnett Reed scored 17 points and Pietra Gay scored 13. Game three is at the Pleasantville Indoor Facility on Sunday. Well, let's stay with police because Police FC will meet W Connections in the finals of the Digital Pro Bowl at the Hazley Crawford Stadium. That's tonight. Looking ahead to the match, police head coach Richard Hood says he expects a hard fight from the league champions who will be seeking their fifth title this season. Never an easy game against W Connection. Um, I think uh, in the last, this last season gone there, I think we have closed the gap on them a bit. Um, I think they f uh, we played them on four occasions, and three out of the four games were very tight. You know, just the the six six one Molin, uh, that was the only um, gap between us. Um, so uh, we are looking forward to it. You know, we we respect the connection as an opponent. Um, we, we we respect all that they have done. Looking back at this team season, he says he expects them to do much better than their eventual seventh place finish. Um, as far as police is concerned, um, for me it was uh, disappointing um, because uh, I, thought, I thought this year we had an opportunity. As a matter of fact, the, our plan really was to, to win something this year. And we had an opportunity, I think, to win the league, but we faltered. And the bombshell of the World Cup is, so far rather, emanates out of the United States, where U.S. coach Jürgen Klinsmann has left all-time leading scorer Landon Donovan off his final roster for the World Cup. Klinsmann surprisingly revealed his final 23-man roster on Thursday afternoon and sprung a massive surprise when he omitted Donovan from that team. Donovan looked poised to feature in his fourth consecutive World Cup after working his way back into Klinsmann's plans during the CONCACAF Gold Cup last summer. But Klinsmann suggested that he saw Donovan as a forward, not a midfielder, and uh, he became surplus to requirements behind Josie Altador, Clint Dempsey, Aaron Johnson, and Chris Wondolowski in the squad. A disappointed Donovan said he would still be supporting his teammates fully during the tournament in Brazil. Well, the stage is set and the players have arrived and are ready. The fans are pouring in. Game day is upon us for the Champions League finals in Lisbon and Portugal tomorrow. Both coaches spoke of their team's expectations and desires for the finals, with Atletico Madrid achieving a dream season to the finals, but never did they think they would be matched up against City rivals Real. Do you think they ever imagined that when the chance finally came, their own city rivals, the upstarts Atletico, would be the ones to stand in their way? It is a fascinating narrative for Saturday's big game. And you can really sense the anticipation among Los Blancos, who filmed their own arrival in Lisbon earlier on Friday. Europe's most successful team has become obsessed with getting into double figures, and they know the wait could soon be over. There are a lot of ex excitement because uh, this trophy is very close. We need uh, uh, to do another effort, uh, and we are working for this. I'm not in favor of anyone getting motivated based on who you play. Motivation is internal, and if not, it's hard to bring out. Each respective team's fans think that their team is the more deserving of the two. For Real, they are seeking an unprecedented 10th European crown, while Atletico just want to win their first. 